Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. It is Steve Arterburn here, and I am joined by two great folks, Chris Williams, and right here for the second time, Randy Powell is joining us. He is a trained professional. He is a marriage and family therapist, and he's founder and executive director of Journeys Counseling Ministry, and uh, he's helped a lot of people, and we had him on before, and we said, okay, let's do it again. Anyway, um, hi, guys. You doing all right? Yeah. Excellent. Having fun. I'm, I'm doing Very well, good. except for one thing. There's one thing I'm having a trouble with, and it's actually something, Randy, that you had oh, talked no. to me about. The difference between coping and caring. So there's self-coping mechanisms, and then there's self-caring mechanisms. What's the difference? Yeah, coping uh, gets you through an issue. So mm-hmm. as you know, you're hurting or pressured, uh, you cope by getting through it. But care is something that changes or heals or corrects. So if I have a sore tooth, I eat on the other side, I'm coping with the tooth. <laughs> yes. But to care for it is to go to the dentist and have some work done. Yeah. So caring actually feeds us, nourishes us, makes a change of some form. Because I find that a lot of us get stuck in our issues, in our struggles, mm-hmm. Um, and we find ourselves coping with the issue. Maybe that be the extra drink at night, or mm-hmm. maybe that be binge watching TV. But the problem is never resolved. Caring or self care is about addressing the problem and working through the actual problem itself. Would that be accurate? That's accurate. It also is nourishing. So yes. when we have care, it's it's not only a problem; it needs nourish. Because sometimes we take something that makes us feel good, like ice cream. Uh-huh. But it doesn't nourish our body, but it feels good for the moment, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. I love my ice cream. But somewhere I've got to eat good food as well, and that's caring. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way we are wired is to go for the easy route, the quick mm-hmm. fix, the instant solution. And fortunately, we some of us have some good, great parents and guidance and direction that help us to grow and help us to be able to have this wonderful gift that we have to give it to ourselves. It's called delayed gratification, and it really does change everything. Now, I want to tell you about something really exciting here. and uh, Well, it's exciting for me, but um, (laughs) all next week on KKLA, it's 99.5 in Southern California. That is one big radio station and market. Frank Sontag is leaving. And I am filling in for five days from 2 to 4 p.m. And uh, you can listen on 99.5 or on the Internet, uh, kkla.com. It is a really big deal to me. Uh, And so I'm going to talk about some stuff that uh, maybe we wouldn't talk about here. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So if you're in the L.A. area or anywhere, you could uh, join me, kkla.com or 99.5 kkla. Really excited about doing that and uh, also I want to mention before I go to a break that we are doing every man's battle online on August the 7th and so some people just can't travel or whatever for whatever reason and and so we're doing it online we do them face to face we're going to do that we love doing that but we're not going to abandon online totally so August the 7th it will not get much easier to find the keys to sexual integrity and live a life of purity than on that August 7th. It is a transformational experience, and you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE, and we'll tell you all about it. When we get back, we'll go to the phones. Randy Powell, Chris Williams, Steve Arterman here. Hope that we can say something that will be helpful to you. We'll be back right after this, and in the meantime, you can watch this program on the New Life Live YouTube channel. Hope that you will. Hi, this is Steve Arterman from New Life Live, and Chris Williams and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workshop. I don't know of anybody 
that wouldn't benefit from emotional freedom. We're all bound or stuck or struggling in some area. What are we going to do there, Chris? Just really help people get clarity around the places where they're stuck in their life. They sort of circle the same mountain of disappointment over and over and over again. You're going to be able to see that mountain clearly and get to a new place of what we call emotional freedom, which is simply I can feel in the world, build a relationship to it, and know what to do with my experiences. The New Life Emotional Freedom Workshop is Saturday, August 14th. Steve Arterburn and Chris Williams will present information on trauma, depression, codependency, and more. And small group leaders will help you process the information you learn. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or register online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back at the break. We were talking about the soul in the last book Dave and I wrote, The Soul of a Hero. You know, it's amazing. Your soul, it it is going to, it longs for a connection with God. It longs for restoration and healing if it's been broken and hurt and yet we just don't know how to really take care of it the soul of a hero is about seven different things that a real hero does and one of them is you know start small well that's what jesus did he became a little baby and entered our world it doesn't get much smaller than that but you can get a copy of it at 1-800 new life it is called the soul of a hero right now we're going to go over here and uh, we're going to uh talk with uh, Janet, uh, she listens on KKLA. She's a Club New Life member, is what they told me. Janet, how are you today? What's going on in your life? I'm great, guys. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for being there. So, um, exactly what you were talking about at the intro about delayed gratification, caring, yeah. and nurturing, it's similar to what I'm experiencing with my 13 year old grandson who um, lives in another state, so I haven't really seen much of him, but he's coming to stay for two weeks while his mother goes through some transitions. He is uh, 13, he's about 300 pounds. Oh boy. Food is something that he uh, uses and his mom and every, you know, to comfort him. He eats what he wants, anything that's healthy for him, he, I mean, shuts his mouth down, will not take it. Yet he has the mindset he wants to lose weight. He feels, you know, bad. But um, I think what has happened is um, his mom did not, we didn't know this kind of kid. So he was born with um, some, um, like maybe attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. Um, He has an ability to focus. And he gets this persistence. Any time, you know, if he wants something, please, no, won't. he won't let it go. And so yeah. uh, it kind of wears you down. Um, so now he's here. Um, and uh, I, my rules are a little bit different. Yeah. Not the best. I don't know how to get him to, um, um, to, to let him know, first of all, I'm not the enemy. He 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 despises me to some degree, yet he's a loving kid. But because I tell him he cannot have this at this time or yeah. until he does a chore, make up your bet, he does everything half-heartedly with one hand. He throws things. He's a, okay. He, 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 I think we that. get it so here. I, and Yeah. Okay. What, What's the specific question then? I think I know. But. Uh, uh, for these two weeks that he's with me, how do I and my husband, how do we get him to um, understand that we are trying to help him um, yeah. overcome these things? You yeah. Know, well, mindset. let me just make a quick comment for you, and then I'll, I'll start with Randy, uh, what he's thinking. I'm I, I'm sad for him that it has been allowed to progress to 300 pounds. It is so hard, 
so hard to lose that kind of weight. And it's almost impossible to feel good about yourself. And it's, I think, almost impossible to have a, a normal uh, childhood and teen years. And I'm just going to ask a quick question, and then I'll turn it over to Randy. But what is it in your daughter that, uh, that you can see yeah. it's unwilling to tell him no the way you're doing? She is all about no, not fear. No, you cannot. No, you not see it. And he has a very um, a connection with her. They're very close. Well, he and, hasn't. She um, hasn't been living up to that. No. No, she. I think she has just been worn down uh-huh. by his this thing that he has. Okay, well, let's see what Randy has to say, and then we'll go to Chris and get some insight from him. Randy? Oh, yeah, this is a classic situation where someone is just coping. There's obvious pain and hurt deep somewhere within him, and uh, this is really sad, Janet, because it's our body trying to find comfort, solace, instead of finding that we have great value and, and that we are children of God with value. So we have to help in this situation to not see himself on the external weight at the moment. He needs to see who he is inside, that he is a masterpiece made by God with great beauty. Now he's scarred, marred, maybe even painted over with the weight. That's the external. But the internal has to find the value as a masterpiece made by God with great value. Chris, what are your thoughts here? And the way that we can help bring that to life is this thing called love. But it's a very specific type of love or, or shows itself in specific ways. And that is, you know, his, think of his behavior as, as rebellion. Mm-hmm. But it's not rebellion against you. It's rebellion against the way he feels. And so by reflecting back to him the things that you've told us, man, you are smart, you are good, reinforce it, be encouraging, be all of those things as you hold to the boundaries, you know, making sure your room's clean, eating something a little healthier is a form of love, of care. He hears it as a form of punishment or um, or most likely even shame, you know, because this, this 13-year-old boy, it's no secret to him the weight that he's carrying around. And so what he wants to do is, again, hole up, meaning hide himself from the world, and then comfort himself. And so you're helping him show up to the world. And, and Janet, you just have to realize that you one week with you or a limited time with you is not going to be a curative. It's not going to get him out of it. But you are going to show him a different way of being. And, and you want to be in contact with his mother, telling her what you're doing, what his reaction is, and that you don't want to waste all this um, effort you're going through, that you are suffering for her and for him, and you're going to set some things in place, and you expect her to follow through on it. And, and I'm telling you, if it, if it was my child, my child would be under the care of someone who could implement a multidisciplinary fix here, which has to do with changing the way he eats in the beginning, not even the amount, but the way he eats, what he eats, the movement, the exercise. And when, when you have somebody working on the inner person, getting that person moving and eating things that make them feel better rather than the roller coaster sugar spike and plunge things change and and that's what i would encourage you to do is find the resource for him that can really support what you're doing and and make what you're doing lasting and support it but man this is just a, a horrible situation where i would hate for you to go to all this you and your husband and then he goes back home, and it was just a waste of your time. I don't well, want that. Well, for Steve, you. I think you also bring up something really important in the multidisciplinary approach is we've got to figure out what, what's going on with this kid medically in his yeah. body. So a good medical evaluation of what's happening, 
you know, with his body is, I think, really important here. Yeah, you're working on, on the finite physical side and also the soul side. Very similar. I have had a chance to read the book of The Soul of a Hero, but we're talking the soul needs fed. So you're feeding his soul to be stronger and also attending to the body and the finite and habits and changes. So it's, it's, it's a both battle that we're working on mm-hmm. in this situation. Yeah. So, Randy, why haven't you read the book? I'm just curious. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you we haven't do, given it to me. That's true. You can you can have one. <laughs> you know, we do uh, a program called Lose It for Life. And it's all about the gradual changes that you can sustain for all of your life. What good does it do if you change everything, eat 800 calories a day, and then you stop losing the weight and now you're eating 5,000 a day and you're right back where you were. So we've got to make some small, small changes. And it really has proved to be effective over the years. And it begins really with a child like him getting up 30 minutes earlier than he gets up now, which means he needs to go to bed 30 minutes later, I mean earlier. Now, when you eliminate 30 minutes off of the night uh, time for somebody being awake, you're eliminating, typically, for someone like him, 30 minutes of high-calorie intake, and you're replacing them, getting them up early, with 30 minutes that don't typically involve a lot of consumption early in the morning. Well, then, once he's got a habit of starting his day 30 minutes earlier, he can start to take a walk during that 30 minutes. And and so you see, it, first you get him used to getting up and having the time to exercise. Then you suggest the, the, the type of exercise that for most people, they can do it, and it's what they need to do. He can take a walk, and that walk can get longer and longer. And then Now he is starting to feel a little bit better. He's got some fresh air in those lungs, and he's not sedentary. Now we can, we see a little bit of motivation for him to eat differently, make some changes, start dealing with more protein, less uh, simple carbohydrates. And you just put one thing on top of the other in, in his life at home, while at the same time, this guy, is going to see somebody like Randy or Chris. And he's saying things like, I hate being large. I hate what people say about me. I hate being defined by my weight. But I am powerless. It seems I'm powerless Mm -hmm. to do anything about it. And then, well, he can hear back. That's the beginning. When you finally realize that in and of yourself, You don't have the power to make all of those changes, and God does have that power, and we start to surrender, and we start to see our life from from God's perspective, not our selfish, self-obsessed, needing comfort perspective, and it starts to change even more. Well, all of that, it begins with a little, tiny, doable change. It's not... Uh, changing everything at once because if you're 300 pounds you're not much uh, in (laughs) any kind of change it's a horrible horrible way to exist I would just say to any parent who has a child that is that large that you know do that child a favor and get them uh, some help because it's just a oh my goodness when I was overweight and I was young I hated to know that summer was coming because that's when everybody got into a swimsuit, took their shirts off, and it was so humiliating and embarrassing. I, I just hated summer. And there are so many folks that are in that situation, young people that are full of shame, feeling like an outcast, and people aren't nice. And so get them whatever help that you can find for them, it really makes all the difference well, in the world. And I think the other thing with that, Steve, too, and I can say this as a father of two young boys, is that it's so easy for us parents to get caught up in focusing only on their behavior. Mm-hmm. 
And what we end up doing is we miss the opportunity of the heart. Mm-hmm. And so attuning to the inside, and, and again, kids aren't very expressive about what they're feeling on the inside, but helping them start to identify what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and walking them through the issues of the heart will really pay off dividends as they, as you were saying, it, as we help form their divinity, their the infinite side, their, their finite side will go along with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Well, I'll tell you, it's painful when um, you're with a counselor as an adult, as a parent, and they say to you, where do you think maybe you could have done a better job? And I want to say to them, what are you talking about? But to really sit with that and to examine what is it I could do better, man, that can change everything. It had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day, every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal. It's just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. The New Life Every Man's Battle online workshop can help. After seven years, he just one weekend, I completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle Workshop. He said, you know, I think this is something that every man should go to. Married, dating, it was definitely life-changing. The Every Man's Battle Workshop is being held online as a one-day event Saturday, August 7th. Don't wait for him to call. To find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the New Life member thank you gift of the New Life Journal, 100 Days of Peace, Seven Ways to Choose Healing, Growth Has No Boundaries, a Restoration Bible, and a New Life Grocery Tote to hold it all. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. RV. We're back. Steve Arterburn, really glad you're with us here today. Larry Sonnenberg is in the studio. And uh, Larry, what I love about your commitment and dedication is you go to every man's battle every time we have one. And it, it really is, I mean, a lot of people go through life They will never, ever see somebody on a Friday hate where they are, have a horrible attitude, talk to no one, uh, have their arms folded as the first speaker gets up there. And then on Sunday, you know, just just day after tomorrow, (laughs) that person is weeping and in front of everybody and saying this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. A lot of people will never experience it, that, and you experience it every single month. It's a front row seat to the Holy Spirit doing the work. Yeah. Is there is nothing better in life than to witness guys in that turnaround aha moment. And when they're crying, it's because they don't want to go home and face what they're going to face. <laughs> yeah, that could be. Well, you know, one of the, I think one of the most moving things is a guy gets up and and he goes through a process uh, symbolically allowing Christ to remove uh, the penalty of the sin that he's committed, to wash it out. And and then when he comes off of doing that, comes off the stage or the side area, you hear these pats happening. He's hugged and hugs, the yeah. guys are patting his back and, and you just know he's feeling love and acceptance, maybe like he's never felt before 
Uh, what do you have for us today, Larry? Well, I want to share a testimony from a recent Every Man's Battle workshop. Okay. Uh, this is from a man named Victor. He says, having the no shame, no judgment zone made it easier to share my story. I would encourage any man struggling with the battle to attend this workshop. I would even encourage those men that think they don't struggle to attend. You'll be forever grateful. I leave this workshop today feeling more liberated, more relieved, and more hopeful. Hopeful to know that my life is not over and knowing God has greater plans for me. In two weeks, I'll be getting sentenced and could face up to 10 years in prison. Oh, boy. While it's still scary not knowing the unknown, I somehow feel equipped and more at peace to face whatever happens in two weeks. Mm. Perhaps it's because now that God is not done with me yet. I know now that God is not done with me yet, and he has forgiven me for my sins. I believe it's now time for me to forgive myself. I mean, powerful. 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 That, that's, that's really wonderful. You know, as you were reading, as you were reading that, Larry, I was thinking about uh, about Pascal's wager, where he said, you know, if mm -hmm. you believe in Christ, but he's not real, mm -hmm. then you really haven't lost anything. But if you don't believe in Christ and he is real, you, you're losing for eternity. And for the guy that says, I don't need to go there, well, let's just say that that's true. If you go and you don't need it. Well, number one, uh, it's not going to be bad for you. It'll be great for you. You'll be able to encourage other men if you don't, quote, unquote, need it. So you might, you could say the worst thing that would happen in going is you would spend a weekend with other men who are transforming their lives and becoming authentic men. That's your downside. The upside is you might discover, I do need it or I'm going to end up like this guy, and I'm going to end up going to prison, or I'm going to end up in divorce court paying tons and tons of money. And it really is, um, it's one of the most consequence-eliminating uh, things that we do. Because up ahead, if you don't stop and start recovery, the consequences are so very severe. It gets worse and worse. Steve, I guarantee you that any guy that goes there, even if he thinks he doesn't need it, he's going to gain some really good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really good stuff. I go every week, every week, every month, and I may be a slow learner, but I get something every time I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I get reminded of things. Jason will just tweak something, and I, say, I hear it differently. But he says things that are universal to men in general. And then there's the specific things about uh, an addiction or a disclosure or things that if you don't need it, will just be a little icing on the cake so you know what you're going to prevent by going there. Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, anything else you want to say well, to us b before we ask folks to support this ministry? Yeah, well, that's that was my next thing. You know, we, we have uh, we've done a good job in receiving gifts. Um, I, I can't say we've done a good job in raising gifts because God has been the source of all that. Yeah, he, he's right. blessed us. But we have we have had resources now to do things we've been wanting to do and couldn't do. And for for instance, uh, I know in the weeks to come, we're going to talk more publicly about a parenting seminar that we're or a workshop. That so, we're Larry, at. we've been around um, thirty four years or so. And people have continued to ask us over and over again, why don't you do a parenting yeah. workshop? We're going to do it. <laughs> it, did, you know, it took 34 years for them to get through. But because of the support we're getting, these are good days at New Life. And if you help us, we'll get to do more things we've been waiting to do. Well, the other things quickly is we've hired some staff to really tighten things up, make things better. Yes. Uh, there's three or four key people that have been hired that it just changing the, the making a big difference at new life yeah they are and it's i have never been this enthusiastic hopeful excited proud about what's ahead of new life as i have been and this is my 18th year larry's had 18 years of a bad attitude and to, see, <laughs> to see you be optimistic it's just wonderful larry it's a gift I and mean, i thank all the supporters who've gotten us to this point. guys but seriously it is amazing guys get a change at every man's battle in 36 hours it took me 18 years 18 <laughs> years yeah. but you're there okay all right, we'll Thanks. be back after this 
most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit its addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arden, we're really glad you're with us here today. And uh, Randy Powell is here, and we're glad. Doing a great job, Randy. We'll have you back again, as long as you tithe to the ministry. And then uh, Chris Williams, Chris uh, and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workbook in August. Really excited about doing the, I mean, the Emotional Freedom Conference. And, you know, one of the things that we deal with, I think, so well, it's so needed and so appreciated, is dealing with a person's anxiety. And so if you come, uh, we will help you with anxiety. And I was saying to you guys at the break, you know, I, I have been going to a, a counselor or a therapist uh, for probably 40 years, over 40 years, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in insurance benefits, actually. But um, I've learned one thing. I've, I've learned one thing. And, and I just, if you're an anxious person, here it is. It's so profound. It was actually life-changing for me. My mom was, you know, she's prone to worry. And so I kind of uh, picked up on a little of that. But here it is. Here's the one thing that all that counseling has taught me. And you get it for free by listening. Here it comes. It's going to be okay. That's it. That's it. It's going to be okay. Think about all the things that were so horrible that might happen two years ago or what struggle you had 10 years ago or whatever. And you know what? It, it, was, it turned out okay. You're here. And everything that you are worrying about up ahead is going to be, one way or another, it's going to be okay. Now, when we go to work on some things, when we take a look at where was that first traumatic thing that caused this intense, uh, beyond normal fear and anxiety, when we start to look at that and start to work on those things, well... It's going to be okay a lot sooner, uh, and we're going to feel okay a lot sooner about a past that we we simply don't um, know what's ahead. Any thoughts on that, guys? I think it's key what you said there, Steve, is that we can think it's going to be okay, but when our feelings betray us, but it's really not our feelings betraying us, it's our feelings relying on historical information. 
Yeah. When I get stuck in not feeling okay, that feeling tends to take over my mind. Or yeah. there is this huge wrestling match between, hey, it's mm -hmm. okay, I'm okay. But then that stinking anxiety is really pops itself out up and it's really hard to battle that. And and Randy, you talk about what we call what you call the bear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a bear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as it's it's uh, going to be okay. It's not a bear. We're reacting like a bear because yeah. of past experiences or current life stressors. So our brain is going into danger mode and it's responding to try to fight the bear, the perceived bear. Yes, but, no, but, but most yeah. of the time it's not a bear. Most of, that's right. And, and thanks for saying most of the time because our, our son, uh, James, we were in um, Knoxville, Tennessee and uh, at a cabin. And he was jogging, and a bear, literally, it was a bear. It, <laughs> wow. it, he had Sometimes to run up onto the, he got up on the roof to get away from the bear. But rarely does that happen. All right, let's go back to the phones, and we're going to talk to Tina from Carpinteria, California. Hey, Tina, how are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm great. Thanks for taking my call. Okay, I am, I'm in transition, and I'm, so I'm 70. It was very close to my, um, to my son and had so much fun with all their friends all these years, all these years. Gets married to a great, great gal. Really awesome, really awesome. First kid, really awesome. Second kid, really awesome. Then they get to be, and then I said, hey, you guys ought to get some friends of your own. And then they did. And now I feel so left out. Mm, that's so, rough. Yeah. You, you and a bunch of other people fun. that are grandparents feel the same randy uh chris your thoughts on that well my my thought goes back to um you're in this really incredibly beautiful area um my favorite beach camping is right there and uh <laughs> and rincon point has some pretty amazing surf so uh when you said carpentria i was immediately transported to where you're walking on the beach and think it's amazing but any geography without good community can be a miserable place. And, and so no matter how nice of a place we are, what makes it nice is those who are there with us. And so as you know, I, I'm a younger guy, so it's hard to say this, but I'm, you know, when I transitioned from Colorado to California, I, I lived in a pretty lonely place and a beautiful place for a long time until I intentionally had to go out and make friendships, make um, new connections and find those relationships in my life that took a while but we we have we're in constant transition especially in our world and our culture today and that the people who we did life before maybe we don't find ourselves doing life with them anymore and that is a yeah. really really painful experience and, and what should she do what what would be one thing she could do to make life better well first and foremost is find uh, what are the activities that other 70 year olds are doing in your area yeah. Yeah. well that you're also I looking for your queen. goals what are your goals what do you... i am the queen of invention oh that's awesome i have invented this club and that club and this club and that club. Mm. i've got a million friends people my age god bless them they're taking care of their aged somebody or their ill somebody and i'm doing the same thing and it's the younger people that are fun because I can't see how old I am. Mm, yeah, I go, what do you yeah. mean you don't think I'm fun anymore? I have no idea how old I am. I think I'm still really cool and fun. Well, I think that's a that's but, a great place to be. And I, I hope something we've said has helped a little bit here. You know, I, I think just like this, the, the transitions that we go through, I mean, we never stop going through transitions and you know you think you've got it all under control things are going well and then all of a sudden uh oh my kids that are grown they don't quite have the time for me uh, that I used to have but that's not the only transition let's let's talk about it. there every transition has some pain with it yeah absolutely I think one of the things that I'm seeing one in my own life but in the people around me is how what lengths we go to to avoid grief mm -hmm. the sense of sorrow or loss as we go through transitions whether it be 
the, the normal transition of children growing up and leaving the home and empty nesting or have, finding their own life or moving to a new community, new job. But these things, like you said, Steve, are happening all the time and they're having an impact on us, but we always don't know what to do with them. Yeah, what you uh, saying about grieving, uh, when we have real close relationships, there's both joy to see them, the kids grow and a sadness. When my kids, uh, my daughter, my eldest went off to college, which was only a, a about a, two blocks away, but she moved into the dorms and uh, she was no longer in her room. Every time I walked by the room, I felt a missingness. I felt mm -hmm. a pain, a sadness. Yeah. And so we talk about that, embrace it, allow the sadness to occur, and then go and focus on the joy that she's independent, she's growing, she's yeah. taking care of herself. So it's allowing both to exist, the sadness and the joy. Yes. Well, you know, I've, um, I, I think being a, a mother is such a, an amazing thing. And you, you want to be able to uh, devote your time to your kids. But I've said this, and uh, people, that, if, if you can believe this, I got criticism. Um, and it's just shocking when I do. But uh, actually, it's pretty common. <laughs> anyway, but I, I said, you know, I, I really fear for the mom who just has the kids because they're not going to be there. And I think you have to prepare for that. And you prepare for it either by uh, while they're at school, you're doing some courses online or you have a hobby or a sport you develop so that when they're gone, you've got that. Uh, or you work on developing community beyond those kids. And I, I tell you, there's some folks that have been so committed dedicated to their kids and then the kids leave and they're just absolutely miserable and I, I think you have to plan if you're going to avoid that and I think that we're in that constant process of creating our own life and yeah. if our life has been created around somebody else and that leaves then again we're left with nothing and that might be the death of a loved one the transition of children that can be a lot of different things whether healthy or unhealthy or in our control or not but Randy, you had mentioned something I think was really important, it's been important in my own life, is that in these transitions, what guides us and sometimes setting goals or a guiding light to tell us where we're going. Yeah, the goals are, you know, even when the child is first born, our goal is to make them independent. Yeah. <laughs> and yet when it occurs, well, course, right. it, it, it's shocking at that moment of independence, but that's the goal. In the middle, and in, in, in the process of helping them launch well, we also need to look that God made us and we have passions and gifts and talents, and we need to be developing those even while they're in the launch phase. I tell you, transitions are tough. I'm glad that we, uh, I really appreciate this phone call where we could, we don't spend enough time talking about the struggle to transition into a whole new way of living. Hi, this is Steve Arterman from New Life Live, and Chris Williams and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workshop. A lot of people are in, you could literally say, in bondage from past trauma that has created an emotional web mm -hmm. that they don't understand, and it prevents them from being free. A person that loses their temper regularly is not emotionally free. Someone who has anxiety just to get in the car and leave the house is not emotionally free. And walking around with the shame mm -hmm. from a childhood or even a bad relationship as an adult, that is not emotional freedom. And we can help you get there. The New Life Emotional Freedom Online Workshop is Saturday, August 14th. Steve Arterburn and Chris Williams will present information on the power of our emotions, procrastination, guilt and shame, and more. And small group leaders will help you process the information you learn. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or register online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, 
please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. We're going to Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Dallas, Texas, where you're calling from, KWRD. And um, how can we help you today? Oh, thank you for taking my question. Sure. So I I have a brother who was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia Um, he is 47 years old and um, he won't take his medicine he doesn't Mm -hmm. think anything is wrong and I am just at a standstill of how I can continue to help him yeah well you know you're not the first person uh, who has a loved one who won't comply by taking the medication and, you know, there's certain things that people have found that work, and there's certain things that don't work. But in the area of schizophrenia, there, the newer medications are really some breakthrough science. And uh, people 20 years ago that couldn't function in society now can do pretty well because of how they have refined the medication. And I'm just wondering if um, there is any way that the medication could be delivered once a month by injection or once a week or something like that where it's not dependent on him picking up and taking a pill for it to get into his system. What do you, what do you think? Is there any way he might be able to take it in a different way? Well, um, that is definitely something to think about, but the challenge with him is that he doesn't think anything is wrong. So yeah. it's almost like if he thinks he has to get an injection, yeah. then he's, you know, he might wonder, like, then why am I doing this? There's well, nothing wrong with me. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think something's wrong? Well, why do you he, think? we started um, to see his behavior change, okay. and one of the, um, a family member had to get a mental warrant for him, and so he had to go to a facility where he was diagnosed with that, but prior to that, we could see that his behavior had Okay, and what was that behavior? Extremely. What was that behavior? He, he thought people were following him. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. He thought um, people were um, listening to him through the television, on sure. the phone. Yeah. And so um, that was kind of the kickstart of it. So when you um, remind him of what happened there and he went to the facility, does, does he respond at all by saying, oh, yeah, I, I remember that now or I've forgotten about that? No, he remembers that he that he went, and and he thinks that there wasn't a reason for him to go. He thinks mm-hmm. it's part of this whole plan that someone yeah. has for him. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what uh, Randy and Chris uh, have to say because it's it's so common. Here's an answer, but they won't take it. Yeah, you're obviously Nicole caring and loving your brother, and that's beautiful. And uh, one of the most difficult things any of us face is when we, someone we love, someone we care, doesn't want to follow uh, the prescriptions, the, uh, the assignments, the things they need to do to improve. Um, I have people who walk in our counseling office and they'll say, help me, but then they won't work on it. And that is more, that's something that will make me cry faster than anything else I can think about is to see them walk out when we have something that can help them. And that reminds me of Jesus when he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you as a hen would gather her chicks, but you would not. The most difficult thing is to grieve, and that's a deep grieving of Jesus when all he wanted to do was love and care for us. And you're obviously wanting to love and care for your your brother, but uh, there's a point where sometimes all we can do is grieve and and and, uh, and pray that a, a miracle will come where he'll see the, the need for the meds. Chris, anything you could suggest for her that 
might be helpful. Yeah, I, I think along the lines that Randy was talking about is that it's still important for you to protect yourself or set boundaries around the behavior that is damaging or dangerous, um, the unsavory behavior. And again, you're not punishing him or, or shaming him for any of that stuff. You're just saying it doesn't work for me and it's harmful for me while you're continuing to invite him in to get help. But as Randy was saying, with when, when these these high end mental illness disorders are incredibly painful, even for us in the profession, because they're a disorder that tells you you don't have it mm -hmm. in your yeah. own brain. And it yeah. is just really, really painful. And so you want to keep inviting him and keep the door open to help, but you also want to have boundaries to protect yourself as you're going through the grieving process. So um, one other thing is sometimes you have to be sure you're not preventing him mm -hmm. kind of hitting bottom like uh, alcoholics do and others. Uh, you don't want to cushion that. You want him to actually do that so he does end up in a facility where maybe this time somebody will break through to him and he will do that one thing uh, that everybody needs to do to get better. You know, there's surrender where it's that emotional, spiritual big deal. But there's another kind of surrender. It's called compliance. Mm -hmm. And there's no emotion there. It's a decision to comply. But that, for many people, is the beginning of uh, everything starting to change. And so um, anything you can do to communicate with the psychiatrist or people that have cared for him, uh, get those suggestions. I would be going online and uh, and just google uh, how do you gain compliance with medication from a non-complying loved one and see what is there i'm going to do that after we uh, hang up all right and i'm really glad that you called i'm glad that he has you uh and as i said just be sure you're not preventing him uh, from coming to the end of himself well, Randy Powell, really great to have you here again on the uh, broadcast. And I'm going to give you a chance. We've got a couple of minutes. I'll give you 30 seconds. Tell people something uh, that you know to be true that might be helpful in their life today. Uh, I think I would go with a masterpiece, uh, mm. that I am a masterpiece. Each one mm. of us are masterpieces made yeah. by God. There you go. uh, no mistake. And Genesis, he said, uh, it is good, all that I've created. Mm. Uh, the problem is sometimes as a masterpiece, uh, we do get marred. We do get scarred. We get painted yeah. on. Uh, the Mona Lisa has been restored a few times. So part of what we do is restore to the beauty uh, that God made us. And that's what we get to help with in churches. And we do for each other is to help restore to the masterpiece God made us. Mm. All right, so when you're down, I want to tell you, there's something the Mona Lisa's doing. Uh, she's smiling. <laughs> yes. And uh, they did, I was just reading about a uh, project where they took some people that were depressed, clinically depressed, mm -hmm. and half of them, they didn't tell them to do anything. And the other half, they said, we want you to smile, whether you feel like it or not. Every time you think about smiling, we want to smile on your face almost every minute of the day. Well, you can imagine what happened. About 20% improvement in, in their mood, and a chronically depressed person, not a lot can really help. I just love that, that study, and there is this thing of, of acting as if. When I was deeply depressed, I did the things I did not want to do. I got out of the house. I went out to a golf course. I exercised. And it's doing the thing you don't want to do that gets you out of that deep, deep mood or even help you be free of the anxiety. If you need some help, would you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE? Gift of any amount, I will send you 100 days of freedom from fear and anxiety. Thank you, Chris Williams. Thank you, Randy Powell. Thanks to all of you who support, listen, watch, and pray for us. We love you. We care about you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE if we can help you in any way possible. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again on Monday for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.